Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now the Carnotaurus has made a massive uprising in popularity ever since the beast was revealed in the early Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. Personally, I love this dinosaur so much that I took over Dangerville from Jacob and Al, you know, because I'm a boss. So let's get into this video, Clayton, shall we? Clayton! What are you doing, man? I mean, the Carnotaurus is my favorite. I was just gonna... <sighs> Clayton. Yeah? Dude, didn't you know that they already just put out a dang trailer for the third Jurassic World movie? You need to go check that shit out, don't you? No freaking way. I'm out. Some of us may remember watching the Disney movie Dinosaur and being completely in shock at the pure awesomeness that was the Carnotaurus. While the entire movie was focused on representing these dinosaurs as relentless killers, I mean seriously, it was like watching the dinosaur version of a Jason movie, the real life version of the Carnotaurus was, well, eh, more like this guy. So the Carno wasn't as threatening as the one shown in the old animated film. But, there is no denying that this was one of the most badass dinosaurs that ever walked this lovely planet. And what if we told you that this dinosaur sounds more like one of InGen's experiments rather than a real life creature? Discovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in the Chubo province of one of the world's most famous places for dinosaur fossils, Argentina. Paleontologists were able to estimate that the Carnotaurus was alive between 72 million years ago all the way to the massive extinction event that wiped out all of the dinosaurs. This specific fossil just so happened to be one of the most well-preserved dinosaur skeletons ever found, even having some of the creature's skin impressions still intact around the fossils. These impressions resembled a mosaic of polygonal, non-overlapping scales. There are also signs of scutes the large thick-like scales seen on today's crocodiles and other reptiles, along with a layer of spikes resembling those found on iguanas that would reach the entire length of the Carnotaurus back. Here's a big one, the Carnotaurus fossil shows no sign of this species ever having feathers. The name Carnotaurus means meat-eating bull. The reason for this being the two iconic horns that the dinosaur had perfectly planted on the top of its skull, making the dinosaur resemble that of a bull. It is theorized that these horns were used for purposes very similar to bulls and other horned animals of today, fending off other carnos from a meal, mating disputes, and even a weapon for ripping the life away from other dinosaurs that were unfortunate enough to get in the way. Now the horns may be a big part in why the Carnotaurus is so popular amongst us humans, but the rest of the creature's skull is what makes this dino seem like something from a sci-fi story rather than a real-life animal. The head of this beast was short, but tall, a much different look than most of the other theropods. This particular skull did come with a few downfalls, though. Due to the bizarre shape of the creature's skull, it was not able to have a very powerful bite, nothing like the bone-crushing bite force of the T-Rex, at least. Instead of power, the Carnotaur's bite made up for it with pure speed. Having adapted a jaw that was able to quickly open and close, this allowed multiple fast and violent strikes where the animals would use its head and powerful neck like a biological axe. Slamming down on its prey over and over until the creature dropped or limped away with vicious wounds that would likely lead to its death. We see Komodo dragons use a technique like this when hunting much larger buffalo lashing out with a lightning fast strike and then waiting for the wound to become infected, slowly and eventually killing the buffalo. Once the Carnotaurus victim passed on, the animal would use something that a certain slithering reptile that we all know uses to digest food too big for its jaws to handle. Having a kinetic skull, meaning the bones and muscles in the skull were able to actually move and shape accordingly to allow whatever it was trying to bite or eat to more easily pass through the mouth and into the creature's stomach. It is theorized that the Carno was able to open its jaws way more than most theropods. Remember seeing the Indominus Rex try to eat the little human hamster ball thing from Jurassic World? The Carnotaurus more than likely would have been able to open its jaws to a level similar to this. You ever see a snake eat something? They have this same ability, sometimes extending their jaw to be able to consume something multiple times the size of the creature's head. The Carnotaurus probably couldn't do it quite as well as a snake, because they do some real exorcism level stuff, 
but this is a dinosaur we are talking about. Imagine seeing this thing's mouth contort and twist as it was swallowing some unfortunate soul, maybe even yourself. It's pretty damn dramatic. Coming in at 10 to 12 feet or 4 meters tall, 25 to 30 feet or 7 to 9 meters in length, and weighing in at about 1 to 2 tons, the Carnotaurus was not the largest theropod of its time, but it just may have been the fastest. Having long muscular legs, similar to an Olympic sprinter, the Carno was possibly able to reach top speeds of 30 to 35 miles per hour, or 48 to 56 kilometers per hour. While this speed for such a large animal is impressive, it did have one major weakness. To reach such speeds, the Carno's body had to adapt for straight line speed, meaning it was designed to run very fast in a straight line. Any sort of quick turn or juke was likely to lead to the animal falling over and looking like a hot mess. So this means that the Carno's preferred hunting technique may have been to wait for the right moment to burst out at top speeds and quickly reach its prey, and follow it up with multiple fast bites to an injure and possibly kill. With the Carnotaurus head and powerful large legs, it certainly lacked in efficient arms, well, arms of any kind really. If you think that the T-Rex had dainty little toothpicks, then take a look at these things. These arms were so disproportionate to the rest of the body that you can hardly even notice them. Other than looking like something out of Deadpool, these little baby arms had some other interesting traits. The fingers were all fused together, which took away individual movement. And to top that, there wasn't even any claws on these tiny fingers. If the Carno would have stayed around a few million years longer, it is very much a possibility that the arms would have disappeared altogether, pretty much making the Carnotaurus that much closer to being a snake-dinosaur hybrid thing that just so happens to have the horns of bulls and the spikes of lizards. Injun would be proud to have their hands on something like this, and it looks like with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom that they finally decided to include this legendary dinosaur. Now let's just hope we get to see more of the Carno than this scene of the thing getting KO'd by the Rex. I mean, come on. The Carnotaurus would have its fingers crossed. If it could. <laughs> At least my mom thinks I'm funny. So there you have it. Another dinosaur introduced to Dangerville and you lovely residents. Big thanks to our bro Clayton for giving us that sweet little cameo. He's got some awesome stuff in the works, so make sure and head over to his channel and check it out. If you feel like we've earned it, make sure and leave us a like and subscribe. You guys are the reason that we keep doing this. Until next time, this has been Jacob. Peace out.